Hello, I'm Wayne Partridge, a Christian businessman. Welcome to part three, and it's talking about communion. And the Catholics call it the sacrament of the Holy Communion. Uh, before I begin, I have got to settle the fact that all churches that, that are true Bible-believing churches have got to be founded and grounded in the Word of God. Everything that is taught and preached must come from God's Word. Now, having said that, I want to show you what the real communion, the Christian communion, is supposed to be. This is taken from a page of, right out of my Bible, and it's what the Lord Jesus did. And he took the cup and gave thanks and said, Take this and divide it among yourselves, for I say unto you, I will not drink of the fruit of the vine until the kingdom of God shall come. And he took bread and gave thanks and break it and gave unto them saying, This is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. That was Luke 22 and this is 1 Corinthians 11. Now pay attention, this is really good. And when he had given thanks, he break it and said, Take, eat, this is my body, which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. After the same manner also he took the cup, when he had supped, saying, This cup is the New Testament in my blood. This do ye as often as ye drink it in remembrance of me. Look at that, in remembrance of me. And now get a hold of verse 26. For as often as ye eat this bread and drink this cup, ye do shew the Lord's death till he comes. Let's read that again. For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, ye, ye do show the Lord's death till he comes. A church that is grounded and founded on the Word of God will have communion like the Bible says. The cup is passed around and the wafer is passed around. The pastor usually has a message on the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. He died on the cross for our sin. And when we take of the Lord's table, it's to remember that. It's to call to our remembrance. Nothing more, nothing less. And the Roman Catholic Church has taken it way out of context. And let's look. This is from their website, and I'm not going to read it all. I'm just going to share pieces of it. A priest is a baptized man who has received the sacrament of holy orders. Through this sacrament, a man enters into the mystery ministerial priesthood which gives him a sacred power a sacred power to serve down in the middle of it it talks about as such a priest is a mediator or bridge builder between God and humanity he does this by participating in the one priesthood of Jesus Christ who unites God and humanity in his very being. Then move on down. A priest offers the ministry of Jesus Christ to us today. When a priest offers the holy sacrifice of mass, it is Christ who offers the sacrifice. So now we have a baptized man, which we dealt with in uh, part one, that baptism does not wash away sin. So we have a baptized man who's still in his sin who is has received the sacraments of the holy order. Alright, and that is a bunch of other baptized priests 
who lay their hands on him and ordain him. And when they ordain him, he immediately becomes a mediator or the mediator, bridge builder between God and man. The Bible says that God, there is one God and one mediator between man and God, which is Christ Jesus. So that is wrong and heresy. And then this man, since he's the mediator, when and he is a priest now, he steps into the confessional and church people come in and confess their sins to him. Uh, he steps aside and Jesus takes over his body. And Jesus is the one that's receiving that and forgiving that sin. When he is baptizing someone, it's not him, it's Jesus. And when he's giving communion, it's not him, it's Jesus. So that's what the Catholic says is a priest. More off of their website, out of their doctrine. And the top part of that talks about a lot of the time for communion is spent preparing the host and the host is the wafer of wheat and water and the wine to become the very blood <clears throat> and, the, and the body of Jesus Christ. Second line up from the bottom. Transubstantiation is the act of changing the substance of bread and wine into the substance of the body and blood of Christ. The Holy Eucharist refers to Christ's body and blood present in the consecrated host on the altar. And Catholics believe that the consecrated bread, bread and wine are actually the body and blood, soul and divinity of Christ. For Catholics, the presence of Christ in the Holy Eucharist isn't just symbolic, it's real. When you receive Holy Communion, you're intimately united with Jesus Christ. He literally becomes part of you. Also, by taking Holy Communion, you express your union with all Catholics who believe the same doctrines, obey the same laws, and follow the same leaders. I found some more information. I'm going to read it to you. When the bread and wine goes through transubstantiation and is changed into the real body, blood, soul, and divinity of Jesus Christ, but the bread and the wine physically remain the same, it is transformed beyond human comprehension. So, Evidently, we're not smart enough to look at that bread and wine that hasn't changed any to know that that is Jesus Christ's body and blood, soul and divinity, all right there because the Catholic Church has decided that. So we have an unsaved man who is a priest that can become Jesus uh, holding up the wine and the bread to be consecrated and to become the literally the body and blood of Jesus Christ and who gives it to his people and they literally take the body and the blood, soul and divinity of Jesus into their body and he becomes them. My friend, I, I I'm not sorry about this at all, but that is heresy. That is the biggest lie that the Roman Catholic Church has ever told another one. That is, none of that is in the Bible. None of it is scriptural. It's all heresy. And what we've got to do is look at truth. The Catholic Church is no longer a church. It never has been. When Satan deceived Adam in the garden and plunged the entire human race 
into death and hell. He hates God. That's how much he hates God. Now he has taken over the church. And the church is no longer a church. It is a club. You look at all the fancy wardrobes, the crowns, the jewels, all the utensils that's used. It is a club. None of that is scriptural. None of that is spiritual. When you look at a priest, you don't see Jesus Christ. You're supposed to see a man, but the Catholic Church wants you to see Jesus Christ. It's not in the Bible. It's heresy. In Revelation 17, St. John shows us and tells us about a whore, the great mother of harlots. And verse 6, And I saw the woman drunken with the blood of the saints and with the blood of the martyrs of Jesus Christ. And when I saw her, I wondered with great admiration. Verse 15, And he said unto me, the waters which thou sawest where the horse sitteth are peoples and multitudes and nations and tongues. The text there, Revelation 17, is God's way of showing us the Roman Catholic Church in today's world. It's true. That you can bank on. The Roman Catholic Church is the great whore of Revelation 17. She is sitting on the waters of peoples, multitudes, and nations and tongues. She is a worldwide club. She is worldwide with millions and billions of members, and she is deceiving them all. Most of the people in hell are going to be there because of the deception of the Roman Catholic Church. And friend, if you're part of that, you need to get out of it. John 3.16 tells us, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. For God sent not his Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. Romans 10, That if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and shalt believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. Verse 13, For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Jesus died on the cross of Calvary for our sins. The Bible tells us that if we will believe that in our heart and confess that with our mouth, we can be saved. And friend, I'd like to pray with you right now. And if you're sincere about this and you'd like to be saved, Pray with me this prayer. Father in heaven, by faith, I believe that Jesus died on the cross for my sin. And I would ask that you would forgive me for my sin. And come into my life, come into my heart, and save me. Save my soul. Make me a new creature, a new person. And I'll ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. Friend, if you believe that, you are saved and you will change. And the most important part right now, besides being saved,